you not understanding what you read? Don't dismiss the terror of the Lord, man. It says, um, in this time, I got news, it's going to be worse. You understand? The destruction of the Lord is going to do, this time is going to be much worse than the flood. Right. Nine, it says, Abraham was a great father of many people in glory. Was there none like unto him? Verse 20, who kept the the law of the most because he was chosen high. he was chosen that's why he had such great faith and was counted on to him righteousness because really that level of faith that was given unto our forefathers and us as Israelites is of the most high that's our gift the most high gifted that to us it's part of the condition of not just that contract but of that promise and of us being his people go ahead God. And it says, um, and was in uh, covenant with him, he established the covenant in his flesh, and when he was proved, he was found faithful. Therefore, he is sure. Right. And you know what? Circumcision is, is, is a custom of the Israelites. All right? The Lord set it up that we would perform that. All right? Notice how anytime the, the, the Lord bound us through uh, 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 particular customs, laws, right, standards. That's why when Abel, all right, we can make plenty of examples of how the Lord specifically chose particular individuals to do his service. So that's the parallel here. Abel is the one that brought onto the most high the acceptable sacrifice. Mm. Think about it. He brought what the Lord wanted. And he was justified through his faith and through fulfilling what the Lord commanded him to do. Now, isn't it not written that the wicked had nothing to do with the, 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 with the, with the law, with the commandments? God. Because they cast the word of the most high. It's not in them, even if they're told. Right. Okay? Because he serves another purpose. That's why. People want to try to make general statements that everybody's the same. I know. Not everybody's the same because we fucking all breathe oxygen. And we all bleed red. And we all living on this earth. That's a vain ass ideology that man created. But it's it's not the truth. The truth is the Lord always separated people from one another and had chosen and unchosen, select and not select choice and not choice and it ain't any of our decisions the decision maker is on high is the most high that's why Abel was justified okay and, and, and like I said we can go through all the different examples but the parallel is the Lord specifically gave chosen individuals to do his service and that they would reap the rewards for that salvation spiritual power kingdomhood, along with the priesthood, mm -hmm. inheriting the earth, all right? Again, the Lord created different spirits to do particular things, and they're not all the same purpose. That's why you have a left-hand side and a right-hand side, spiritually. Wow. It says, verse 21, therefore he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed, and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth, and exalt his seed as the stars. Yeah, and again, that's all, you go back into the scriptures, and we have plenty of scriptures to prove, prove that that's particularly dealing with the Israelites. We're the ones that is known as the constellation, as the stars. We're the orderly arrangement. Yeah, please say that. <laughs> all right, so sorry. We're the real stars, man. And while it's not perceived yet, all right, it doesn't matter because the Lord is going to eventually, in due time, raise us up. And he's going to give us that glory and fame in his proper time. We ain't worried about, oh, look, we want it, we desire it, and we're going to get it. But it's going to be on the Lord's time. So until then, we just got to patiently wait for suffer. That's it. All right? Fine. Uh, and, it, yeah. and it reads on. It says, and caused them to inherit from sea to sea and from river 
and unto the utmost part of the land with Isaac, did I did he establish likewise for Abraham his father's sake the blessing of all men in the covenant, and he made it rest upon the head of Raas of Yaquab or Jacob. There you go. It, the, the, that's the proper succession of how the promise was passed down. Okay? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, like I said, those are the, those are the patriarchs, meaning head or originators. So the Lord preserved his, the seed of Israel to continue, all right, them promises that were made before the foundations of the world began. I keep basically saying the same thing different ways until it hits, until it resonates, until it's absorbed, until it's digested. All right? And that, that, there it goes. Last verse. And it says, And he acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him an heritage and divided his portions among the twelve tribes did he part. Beautiful. Among the twelve tribes. Okay? Because upon the twelve sons, okay, the Lord blessed us, man, with, with particular lands, gifts, right? Of course, we're all going to receive that gift of salvation, all right? Two thirds will be, you know, blessed in the kingdom, you know, with the rest of the one third, beginning with the 144,000. But nonetheless, all Israel shall receive, all right, that salvation and be put in the stead of a king, all right, as a prince and have servants, slaves. Incredible strength. They're gonna be perfect. Right. Okay. Wives, dominion, property. All right. The heart's desire, man. <coughs> and the Lord got a, a special blessing for the Lord's 144. You're mm -hmm. gonna have a least in the kingdom. All right. And the greatest in the kingdom. And we're hoping to be a part of that great those man. You know what I mean? That's the ultimate prize. Nonetheless, Jake gonna receive. Their reward, you know, just for being Israelites. Just for being Just Israelite. for being an Israelite. Being you understand? Israelite. But there's a particular reward for those that do the service on the most side. Again, only given to the Israelites. So the rest of the heathen, where does that leave y'all? Well, that's Leviticus the 25th chapter. Alright? 44th verse. As well uh, as well as Revelation 2 and 28. You won't be striving to try to keep them laws. Alright? Because you ain't going to be doing the filthy acts that you do now. All right? Women are going to be in order. All right? They're not going to be overweight and rebellious, thinking they're equal. Okay? Ain't going to be none of that in the kingdom. If, if I, go ahead. Go ahead. If I may say, because you, you prophesied right there, because you said that um, the 144,000 men is going to... Um, it's going to have a, 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 a higher stature, a higher status. And it, and it tells you that in the scriptures. The scripture says that. It says that. It says in 2nd Ezra chapter, if you don't mind, so like Yeah, go ahead. If 2nd um, Ezra is chapter, um, chapter 2, there you go. Um, get to the point. Chapter, verse 46. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is that crowneth them? That's the that's what you prophesied because those them is the 144,000 men yep. that's gonna receive the glory. That's the one that's standing out here on I brought this out. We those men doing the standing out here um, for for this young man that's, that's that we we're about to speak about. Yep. What young man is that crowneth them and giveth them palms, psalms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me. It is the son of Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world. Yeah. So there's a reward for our labor. Because we continually confess the names of the, our power, which is Yahweh the Most High, and his beloved son, that sitteth at the right hand, Yahweh Shah. So we constantly confess, all right? Not just verbally, of course, that. But in our own lives, right, into the house of Israel, and really to the whole world. Right. Like I said before, the whole world, the whole world needs correction, needs uh, order, 
And we're telling the people very plainly, what you see right now is temporary. The conditions of this present time underneath this Edomite, this wicked oppressor, is not going to continue. That's why the Lord told you that the fashion of this world faded away. You're damn right. Because if it weren't so, then shall now flesh be saved. And that's how evil, all right, of an empire, that's how evil of a, of a nation the Edomites are. That's right. We don't? I, um, it is the son of Yahweh whom they have confessed in the world. Right, so it told you who, who that man was that was crowning them. So Yahweh Shai is going to place a crown on each of our heads. Ooh. He's going to be responsible for our salvation. He's the bringer of peace. The mediator. All right? That's right. They confess in the world. They begin, I mean, then begin I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the right, name see, of Yahweh. He understood like those men right there. How about you know you yeah. can imagine saying? Most high yeah. yeah. bless them men above measure. Ooh. Through it all. Yeah. To the point they're going to receive a crown. Yeah. They're going to be the first ones to get those new bodies. Yeah. They're going to be judging the 12 tribes. They'll be judging the nations. They'll be judging the world. Come on, man. That's what we're we looking to get saved. And then the Lord let us loose when we get busy, man, and start correcting things, you know? Because that's all those prophecies we still got to fulfill. We talk about the salvation. There's things that come after that, too. That, that in itself is beyond incredible, man. Right. I the body. Just to make it to the chariot, man, you're going to be speaking. You're going to be full of emotions. Okay. Indescribable. All right? But then after that point, when we got the new bodies, when we're on the level of a God, it's over, man. It's over. And we're going to go around to wherever the Lord appoints us, and we're going to round up these heathen nations, okay, beginning with the elites, and we're going to put you into slavery. That's right. That's right. And undo all these different dominions throughout the earth, man. But it's going to begin with Yahweh Shai bringing it. That fire going to the earth. He's going to overthrow every throne, every king, every prince. And then he's going to use us as his battle axe and weapon of war. All right, we're going to be given that fierce anger from on high to execute his wrath. That's right. To execute his vengeance. Huh? That was awesome. And that's why the Lord said, "Thou shalt." We're not going to spare. We're not going to spare. We're not going to pity, man. Right. But we don't. We're not going to have the conditions that we do now being held back by these chains of darkness and being limited on our power, because that's what we limit. Okay. We have power through faith, through the words of the Most High. But it's coming a time where the Lord going to give us, all right, power to perform His will, actual spiritual power. Got. Got a couple precepts. That was it, bro. Yeah. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book. Yeah, so you're gonna have individuals, they're gonna perish utterly in this great, utter destruction from on high. Like, and that's another thing that the scriptures tell you, it's worse than anything that's ever happened. So then of itself, it, you can't even fathom the, the, the level Okay, and to the degree in which the Lord is going to bring about that destruction. And it's going to be horrific. It's going to be the worst thing. Forget websites like Rotten.com and Core.com and all that. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to witness things firsthand. And you're going to see thousands fall on your left and on your right. The, 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 the death is going to be so present that the stink is going to come up, man. There's going to be bodies everywhere. All right. Right. 
It's gonna be all out pandemonium. All right, it's gonna be crazy out here. And at that point, the love is gonna be completely waxed cold. It'll be a dog eat dog world. All right, it'll be so-called survival of the fittest. Nobody's gonna spare nobody in them times. And people are already on the brink of losing it. Right? People are very tense right now. Second Thessalonians. Oh, Salakia. What the brother said, and then there also shall be those that are found in the book. Those are the Lord's elect. All right, those are the Lord's elect that are going to be found written in the book, the ones that are going to be preserved for that evil day. And that's why the Lord said that we're going to laugh at famine and destruction. Why? Because we're going to be comforted in this time. We're going to be the ones, hopefully, receiving spiritual power. Because you're still going, um, we're still going to receive spiritual power even on this side to a particular degree for the performing of the miracles and the healing and the great and wondrous works. All right. As a, as a witness on, on to the house of Israel and really the world. Okay. So that that's going to be the Lord's elect brothers that are going to be performing these miracles out here. All right. And they're going to be forming the Lord's will and being protected and ultimately delivered. Go ahead. Second Thessalonians 1 and 7. And that's part of receiving that reward. That's part of receiving that reward, man. Go ahead. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. And we're troubled, bro. Right? We're the troubled, we're distressed. Right? We have anguish of soul and spirit because we want that deliverance, we want that salvation, we want that we want wickedness to be put out tonight, man. We went out of these corruptible bodies, all right? The Lord Yahushua shall, shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels mm. in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that... Oh, and, and, and vengeance, the definition for the word vengeance is a judgment, okay, or a punishment for wrongdoing. Again, that's beautiful that the brother read that, because like I said, the world for some time has been without consequence. Go to the book of Habakkuk, the first chapter, and I think roughly the fourth verse, it tells you that the law is slacked. All right, therefore, the right judgment proceedeth not forth. You got Esau over here making fucking deals with individuals that should have been put to death already. Just for unnecessary extra info. Oh, we go give you a bleed deal. Nigga murdered somebody. You put his ass to death. Don't keep his ass alive. All right? Then you got certain instances where Esau will criminalize you and put you in jail and serve fucking three life sentences where there really is no crime because you didn't really break a law. Somebody once said, I forgot who said this, we don't have a judgment uh, or, or a justice system, we have a legal system. And it's full of hypocrisy. Because if it was real, a real justice system, then they would uh, come out the scriptures. No balance in this man's in, in way of, uh, of executing a proper judgment, right? Flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh. There you go. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh So that covered the two thirds and the heathen. Now the heathen by default are going to be destroyed because the gospel was not given to them. And they're going into slavery. Two thirds the Lord is going to spare, but they're going to have to die on this side because they didn't heed the words of the prophets to repent and to return back onto the Heavenly Father through the beloved Son, all right, Yahweh and the Son Yahweh Shai, right? So that's that's what it is, man. Go ahead. Ezra 4 and 1. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity build the temple unto Yahweh our power of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, let us build with you, for, he, for we seek our, for, Salah, for we seek your God as he do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Ezra, Ezra Hayden, king of Ezra, of Esir, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, you have nothing to do with us 
to build a house onto our power. Yeah, the, the, the natural Gentiles and heathen cannot come into the congregation and build with us on a physical level and on a spiritual level. Okay, the temple that we rebuilt it, all right, is spiritual. And they have nothing to do with this because, again, they were not given the tools. They were not given the spirit. They were not given the faith. All right, and ultimately, they were not justified in the heavenly father. It was not given to them to do. Because the kingdom is not a kingdom for the entire world. The kingdom is the kingdom of the nation of Israel. You people are going to be living in it. You're going to be living, but you're going to be living in our kingdom, okay? Living according to our standards and according to our judgments. That's how this is going to go down. You will be perpetual, all right, servants. You will be perpetual servants. Again, all the heathen, all non-Israelites, you're going to be slaves to the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right, and our scattered brothers and sisters, all right? Because our, hey, the women of the tribes, they're going to be given uh, servants as well. Women of the other nations are going to serve our group. Right. Psalms 149 and 6, sorry, 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth. The high praises of the Holy Scriptures, Lord. And a two-edged sword in their hand. And that's a literal two-edged sword. It's not a metaphor. It's a literal two-edged sword. And what does it represent? It represents Israel be given, given power, all right, to destroy our enemies. Go ahead. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. And my heart, retribution is going to come through the way of the Most High and His Son giving us power to do His bidding. Okay. And we're going to benefit wholly from that. All right? And we're going to desire to do it. We're going to want to do it. We're going to love to do it. <laughs> That's right. It's a beautiful thing, man. But we're going to be justified, okay, because we're going to be performing the will of our Heavenly Father, man. So you can't get mad at us. You can't tell me I'm taking anything out of context, all right? Or advocating for anything that's not written. Y'all call yourselves God-fearing. Y'all call yourselves Christians, all right? Y'all say, under God we trust. Well, this is the program of the Most High. And we already, we already understand going to be persecuted. Everything's being recorded, documented, everything we say, everything we do, so that they can try to bring a uh, testimony against us. And at the end of the day, the whole side got our backs. The whole side is going to preserve us if we be in that elect. And the Lord ain't going to find, look, the Lord said that you can't lay any charge against the Lord's elect. Again, we're going to be justified to be how about you got shot, not your damn penal system. I got a precept for that, what you said about blocking. I got a precept for what you saying. That's going to be a testament of our faith. Right? I got the Lord put us in those situations anymore, right? Right. I got a precept for you saying that we're going to um, we're gonna have some judgment on the other nations. Yeah. All right. It says, um, Malachi chapter 4, verse 3. And ye shall be tried down, and ye shall try down the wicked. For they shall be as ashes unto thy soul. Yeah, that's powerful, man. Of your feet. It's a lot. Yeah, that did it emphasize it. Yeah. Trotted down like the ashes underneath our feet. Yeah, I mean, put it plainly, we're going to be given power to stomp you out. Super spiritual. Okay? That's right. Literally. Literally. I mean, the Lord said that we're going to be given a rod of iron to beat the nations into uh, shivers. <laughs> hey, 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 that's going to literally break you into pieces, man. Separate your skull. All right. Dislocate your joints. Pul pulverize would be another good word. Look up the word pulverize. You know? 
Yeah. I may say, um, you remember when you tread something, yeah. all right, or you, or you beat something, all right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's right. You're breaking right. it up. That's literally what we're going to do. We're going to break down your your flesh, man. And and we're going to be given that power. That's it. Because we, if you think about it, we, we don't have no no authority to do it now. No, it's we not. Don't. We don't have no even Esau. That power, when he was lynching us, doing all that stuff to us, the Lord gave him that, that authority, that power to do that and to us. And we're not going to take it upon ourselves to start doing any of this. Yes. We got to wait on the Lord. That's why I said that, that's why I constantly reiterate, like the Father's saying, it's according to the will of the Heavenly Father. So there's a time and a place for all of this. Right. That's why it says the patience and the faith of yeah. the saints. We're not going outside, right. all right, the doctrine or the will of the Heavenly Father. We're not hastening above our name. No. We're waiting on Him to give us the necessary increase, all right? And then these things will be performed, but make no mistake about it. All right? Right. These things will be performed in their proper time and place. You want to add on to that? No, no, I got to finish the first one, okay? Okay, go ahead. Um, right, and it says, um, and the soles of thy feet in the day that I should do this. Ooh, in the day that I, right? That's right. Should do this the, uh, with. Let me say the Lord Yahweh Shem Al Shab host. So that's that just that's clear indication that that you ain't got your own free will. That's a clear indication. You can't do nothing on your own free will. You ain't gonna be out there, even though they, these are death angels on these people that you see these people that's running around just killing people. Those the Lord put those death angels on those people so those people can put the death. But well, recently, uh, somebody um. Somebody told me, Salaki, somebody told me about a, a man going around cutting out women uterus. That's death. You just don't think of shit like that. Yeah, that's the spirit of vengeance. That's the spirit of vengeance. Them damn women did something, Salaki. Yeah. No, he's right. Lord said, whoever perish being innocent. Yeah. All right? So those that plow iniquity reap the same. All right? So if you, you go over here sowing, all right, evil deeds, then you're going to ultimately <laughs> reap the consequences, all right? And just because it doesn't happen right away doesn't mean it's not going to happen at all. But that's the system that we live in today. These people are so uh, basically in a state of cognitive dissonance that they believe that there's no consequence for their actions. But that's okay because the Lord told you that he was slow to anger and great in power. See, the Lord will let you get away seemingly with particular uh, actions uh -huh. until the day he come to visit you. And that's okay. the thing. He lets you build that confidence in unrighteous dealings. Alright? It comes for you in a day where you don't uh, when, you, when you don't know, man. It's gonna catch you off guard. It was a really bad accident. Uh on my way, we had this individual speeding on a motorcycle, mm. not wearing a helmet. He crashed into these people when he went flying and he fucking became uh matter on the pavement. They had to bring out the hose and, and wash the road. Woo! <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, he wasn't expecting that shit. That, that wasn't his he day. He didn't hop on the bike, no helmet, <laughs> expecting that shit. Damn. He rode that bitch with confidence. Had his whole day planned, I'm sure. Yeah. He had a particular destination. Yeah. Not to be a motorcycle driver. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot. Same difference. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Right? The beautiful thing is, I'm going to go that way. Okay? You saw got these plans over the Lord's people. He's not going to be a chance. No, I just, hey, what side do you have? But you could be in denial all you want. If you're an Edomite, you're going to slavery. You can be in denial all you want. They're going to make a difference to the whole side. You're still going to get that judgment. No? Well, continue to read. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Right. And the, 
like I said, Esau, he's setting up to try to do something to the Lord's elect, but you ain't gonna get the Lord's elect. All right? No matter what weapon or, or uh, you know, evil plot you got, it ain't gonna be fulfilled, or shall I say, will not prosper. Mm -hmm. You won't be successful in, in trying to take out the Lord's elect, no matter what. Go ahead. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Yeah, we, and that's the thing, we condemn in the works of our oppressor, and we ain't gonna continue to do so. All right? It ain't gonna make no difference if you sent a man of the Lord in prison, or what have you. All right, because we have the spirit of, we ought to obey Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Ben Meh. And we know what the end, we know what the be all is. Okay, we know that we're going to put, be put in particular situations for our faith to be tested, but for a testimony against you. Read. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. Right, and the Lord gonna give us spiritual power so there ain't gonna be nothing that you could possibly do against us anyways. Particular man is gonna be uh, performing miracles and many wondrous works. And then brothers that may not necessarily have spiritual power is gonna receive divine intervention and those angels are gonna take charge over him and protect him, deliver us out of prison, okay? Cause all types of things to happen, all right? Like when Paul, all right, was arrested and put into prison, all right, what did the Lord do? The Lord